All right, guys. Uh, project for the afternoon, day. It's actually late in the afternoon. Probably today and tomorrow. Uh, this is it. It's a skid steer bucket. I don't know exactly how wide it is. Should have found that out before I started talking to you. Five foot bucket. Uh, as usual with these types of things, they take a lot of beating because they're dragging on the ground a lot. And so, you know, it, it takes a toll on this material. And of course, it just popped right open. Uh, customer was nice enough to have it sandblasted for me and cleaned it all up. Looks really good. Uh, so we're going to be replacing the floor and a little section of the side. As you can tell here, it really wore, kind of tapered it out a little bit. So I'm going to use this line as my zero mark. It'll probably gain maybe about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half at that point. So we're going to just cut a little section here and just splice it in. Kind of straightforward. Uh, the customer already brought me the material for the, for the base that there and the cutting edge or not necessarily, not necessarily cutting edge but the doubler plate here so you can bolt on the cutting edge so a uh, neat little project uh, shouldn't take too terribly long and so i hope you guys learned something so let's get started all right so the customer provided material is that guy right there and from there to there it is 29 inches and so i'm determining that he was considering this first bend as that basis for that number so that's what it turns out to be right in there and so i'm going to make a rough cut just to kind of get this center piece out of here and then i can go back and trim a little closer onto this this edge here and make a nicer cut but what's nice is that this next bevel that's about about two inches higher actually is another inch in distance and so that'll help me make sure that i have the right spacing from that wall to the front of this edge and it really just realistically it's not all that critical you know it's pretty close it'll work but you know that way we can have some type of sort of some sort of reference because these edges are rounded off uh, both sides and you can't really get a good measurement so by being able to use that all along the back it kind of makes things a little easier it lines things up a lot a lot nicer so let me go ahead and plasma cut that rough section out and start fine-tuning it all right so for my first trick I'm gonna use this guy here it's a thermodynamics um, plasma cutter I've had for a while and so it works good the reason I'm using it is because it's got this standoff that I made in the, uh, the hypertherm I don't have it yet so we're gonna use that all right All right, so as you can tell, it's the next day, different color clothes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, here's where we're at. I kind of left it uh, a little rough. You know, I should, looking back, I should have just cut the first line to begin with. So either way, that kind of stinks, but oh well, it is what it is. Anyway, so I'll use a straight edge to kind of mark my line so I can recut that again and then trim off these excess pieces. I did end up cutting through the strips. There's some wear strips that go along the back side of this. And I will be replacing those with some material I have. So that'll be fine. And of course, it's gonna be a matter of filling in this little gap area. You can kind of see a taper from here, that way. So that will be next. Let's, uh, let's get that done. Hopefully you guys can hear me because I have an uninsulated roof and it's raining. So hopefully it's not too loud. Either way, here we go. Well, I ended up marking that out, and it didn't work out as good as I thought it would. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> it turns out my little standoff here, I'll just turn it 
I'll just turn it crooked uh, this way, and it'll run right in that groove of the uh, back of that plate. Now I have to balance it on the back side of this groove because if it'll leave a trailing uh, slag through the cut, I don't want to run it on this side. But this sits in there pretty good. I was really surprised. Check this out. So, pretty easy. Uh, that makes it a lot easier. And if the line's a little crooked, well, that's what the, the welder's for, to fill up the gap. So let's, uh, let's see if that works. Excellent, excellent. So that came out well. Fairly straight. Straight enough. And that, I cut most of that off so I can blend that in with the flap disc. But I made a pretty serious boo-boo. Uh, I didn't think this quite through so well for some reason. I wasn't expecting it to rain today. And I was going to open up the shop doors, move this table back out. But now my material is underneath my table. Which is dumb. So <laughs> my material for this site piece here. Those strips there, it's the same thickness, 3 sixteenths. So that was kind of crazy. Um, man, now I gotta move it. So uh, pause there for a moment and or be patient. I may film it, I don't know. Either way, I gotta get that out, All right?
All right, so it's looking to be like, there's a almost a three inch gap from this point to this point. And what I did with those strips is I cut them three inches. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of use this, this flat surface here, the part that was good as uh, my straight edge to say, and I'm gonna put a, a tack here just to kind of hold this line where it needs to go. And that way I can overlap this guy in this area to know where to mark it out and to cut it. And so uh, let me put a tack here and we should be, should be good. So as you can see there, I marked it out with just a standard carpenter pencil. Could have done a black marker, I guess. In this corner here, I could I could round it off, but I could leave it square too. This, this is far back enough in the bucket that it's not gonna create an issue with cracking to say that's a high stress riser. So uh, what I'll need to do now is just make sure that I can cut this here. And this is a little bit thicker because it's got that doubler of that 3 8 piece on the outside. So I will slow down here and continue cutting there and then install this piece now add another piece on the outside and it's a little bit tricky uh, but what we're trying to shoot for is just a new piece this way so things are looking pretty good so far so let's start cutting This is why I don't like plasma cutters. They cut it a severe taper. They're just nuts. Either way, uh, I'll straighten that out. We'll tack that piece in place and then get it lined up correctly. Let me clean that up.
Cool, just like that. So now we'll cut this off here. Uh, we'll turn it over, do the same thing. I would like to tack it all together, the whole thing, before I weld it out, just so that <laughs> it doesn't tend to warp. If I started to weld this side, it'll probably peel up this way. And now we don't want that, of course. So let me clean up the rest of this here, turn this guy over, do the same thing with the other side, and then we can start tacking this bottom skin on here. All right.
All right, so if you notice there, I took that off. Uh, it turns out that I should have measured this to know, but I didn't. They measured it as, a, as to being a five foot bucket, which is right on the money if you're going outside to outside measurement. However, the skin or this bottom plate here needed to be the inside measurement. So that comes out to roughly about 59 and a half. Um, so I need to trim this guy down a little bit on each side or let me see, I'll have to measure it out from here to here, see how far off it actually is. But I just need a little bit off of here so that that'll slip in place. So a little bit of a hiccup, but they didn't know and I didn't measure. So partially my fault for not measuring before I stuck it in there, but uh, it will work out just fine. All right, well, let's, uh, let's trim this guy up. Okay, so that turned out a little bit better. And 30 seconds shy, even better. Okay, so let me <laughs> put that guy back up on here. I gotta clean this up first. Very nice. Okay, so that's fitting in there pretty good. Uh, that looks a little low because the sheet's sagging down off the edge of this here, but other than that, it's looking good. I am uh, off just a light, little bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch on both sides there. I guess I didn't cut it far enough. Eh, close enough, right? You don't say anything I won't, like I say. <laughs> so uh, what I think I'll do now is I'll put some tacks in those areas there and then raise these guys up to sit flush with the bottom and i think we're going to be good you need to move this a little bit like that and we are going to be rocking and rolling real soon all right let me throw some tacks on there Okay, for those of you that weren't able to see, basically all I did was use the this jack to hold it flush against the bottom. It looks really good. Came out all right. There, got plenty of surface to weld. I'll be welding this on the outside first, I think, so that it doesn't, so it pulls this way. I still need to add that uh, doubler plate here uh, next uh, before I get to welding. That way it kind of holds itself uh, rather still. Let me add that thing and then I can see where I'm gonna uh, begin welding. I may turn it over and weld on the outside so it doesn't curl in this way from welding in here. I don't know yet, we'll have to see. Let me, let me get that other piece added first and we'll go from there.
Okay, so I left a little gap there, right? Of course, there's a little bevel, a uh, little bevel for that missing that weld. Uh, this has a little bow to it that way. I'm hoping will offset the weld that goes along this area here. This is always kind of tricky because you you know can almost never get it right exactly. So I hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> so um, I think we're ready to weld. So maybe a lot of fast. Uh, high speed welding because it's just welding really nothing really special to it. So let's see what happens That seemed to work all right. So, oh, it got me a B. <laughs> but uh, basically, I was just using this to kind of bow it in the downward direction. I don't know what it did. Can't really tell. But either way, it's in there tight. And so now I'll just flip it over, weld the back side of that there, and then put those wear strips. I don't exactly have wear material, so I'm just going to be using like some 3 8 flat bar. It'll be fine. It's going to be a long time. Uh, by that time, the top half of this, I think this is a sweeper bucket. Um, the top half of this will be wore out, so this is new. All right, let's turn this thing around. Looking here, fit it wasn't so bad. Turned out all right. Uh, this is where that I cut through that other strap. I'll just put another one right in here and give it a little space and fill that in. Be fine. But overall, just needs a little seal weld. Sides came out real nice and clean, so that's good. Probably weld the bottom of this uh, external piece at least. Same thing over here. Now the blade's gonna go, come out this way, so it's fine. Then I just have to make sure that I stop this, wherever that blade goes. I have to measure from the hole this way. But we're almost done, so it's looking really good. But let's keep going.
Well, there you go. Uh, just like that, this baby is done. Uh, I went ahead and welded that off camera. It's no big deal. But uh, there's some little stitch welds uh, here. Got the seal welds around here. You know, it wasn't really supposed to be anything pretty. And that works good. So that should do it. Uh, everything's looking really nice. I need to turn it over to see how flat it stayed. It may have a little bit of a bow, but uh, with load forcing this way, it may flatten out just the way it needs to be. But we'll check it out here in a second. Let's uh, let's take a look and see what it looks like. Pretty flat. It did pretty good. All right, well, excellent. Well, that turned out really well, better than I thought. And so, uh, I think what it was, uh, I think it was, uh, oh man, I forget, I think an eighth of an inch longer than the actual length. So, in case you wanna jam something in there like that, that's, that's what uh, I did. About an eighth of an inch, 3 16 longer, created a bow, worked out well. But anyway, look. Uh, came out good welds are all right. I mean they're gonna smear off. Well, actually the outside ones are gonna smear off eventually But uh, these look good. So I hope you learned something from it. Uh, I know I did uh, That was a little more work than expected, but it's a brand new bucket especially being that is Sandblasted customers gonna you know paint it up. It's gonna look brand new brand brand new. So uh, Thanks again for watching and I uh, thank you for the support and if you guys uh, don't mind, you know, don't subscribe. It doesn't hurt you. Uh, maybe you'll learn something here and there. Or at least, uh, you know, you see something interesting. All right, we'll catch you guys on the next one.